Hi, I'm Dave Salahay. Welcome to this episode of The Photo Performance. In this series of podcasts, I cover the digital processing tools and techniques that comprise the photo performance in the 21st century. These podcasts and posts provide in-depth reviews which are hard to find elsewhere on the web. After watching this podcast, please visit my website, photoperformance.org, and add your comments and questions. And if you find something useful here, please share it on your favorite social media platform. Selecting and masking are essential skills for every digital photographer, so I had high hopes that Perfect Mask would simplify this process for me. The demos and tutorials on the On One Software website make it look easy to quickly mask complex subjects. The web page for Perfect Mask 5 says, quote, Replacing backgrounds has never been easier. So I set out on this review with high expectations. I was hoping to learn how to work the magic on my images that I saw in On One's videos. So I decided to jump right in and start masking. For starters, I chose this photo of three pelicans gliding off of Santa Cruz Island in Southern California. I figured this should be a fairly easy image with the subject pretty well defined and a solid blue sky in the background. Here I have the photo opened in Photoshop and you can see that I have the pelicans on the top layer and there's a solid color fill on the layer below. This solid color layer will make it easier to see how well the masking process is working. Now I'm going to choose File, Automate, Perfect Mask from the Photoshop menu. I'm now in Perfect Mask, but I've edited out of this video a process that runs every time you open an image for masking. This process is called segmenting, and for this image it takes about 30 seconds. At least, that's what it takes on my PC with a Core i7-940 CPU. The amount of time it takes depends on this setting in Perfect Mask. I've got the larger, slower, more accurate choice set. If I switch to the smaller, faster, less accurate setting, the process takes less than 10 seconds. For now, I'm going to leave it on the more accurate setting. Perfect Mask works primarily by distinguishing the colors of the foreground from the colors of the background and then removing the colors that are in the background. You usually want to help it to know which is which by telling it with this pair of eyedroppers, the Keep and Drop tools. First I'm going to zoom into 100% with the Zoom tool, and then I'll select a few shades of the blue sky with the Drop tool. Here's the Drop tool, and I'm going to choose a few areas around the blue to get the different shades. Next I'm going to select the Keep tool and choose a few areas on the Pelican that I want to keep. Notice as I'm making these selections that the colors are appearing in this set of palettes over in the lower right, the Keep and Drop palettes. So the next thing I'm going to do is with the Zoom tool, I'm going to zoom out to take a look at the whole image so I can see as I'm getting ready to drop out the sky how it's looking overall. And I'm choosing the Drop tool, which looks like an eraser, and I'm just making a couple of quick strokes, and look, the uh, sky is almost completely gone. It is completely gone at this level, although I'm going to zoom in now and take a close look at, the, at one of the birds. And as you zoom in, you can see that there is a little bit of blue fringing around the tips of the feathers. So that's going to be our next task, is to clean that up. And that will be pretty easy. We're just going to grab this refine brush and bring the size down using the uh, bracket keys, just like in Photoshop. And then stroke around the blue areas with, that we want to get rid of. And as you can see, it, that works pretty well. It takes out the blue. It leaves the, the keep colors that we previously chose. And you can see real clearly with that bright green, yellow, ugly background, but it, it's very effective to see that the blue is going away and we're, we're keeping the, uh, the bird. We're not losing any of the bird as we're doing this. So we just do this around each of the birds, and there you have it. Next I'm going to try a slightly more challenging photo. Here I've got this photo of this one oddball Cymbidium orchid at the Hatfield Nursery in Ventura, which is blooming in September long after all the other orchids. As before, I've created a solid color layer below the photo layer so that we can easily see what's happening with the mask. Okay, I'm going to go into Perfect Mask now. 
As we open this image in Perfect Mask, Perfect Mask is going to segment the image as usual. I still have Perfect Mask set to the larger, slower, more accurate setting for segments. As you'll see, this 16 megabyte photo is going to take about 30 seconds to segment. Although this image is more complex than the last one, I was thinking that it should still be a fairly easy subject for Perfect Mask to handle, since the colors of the flowers are nearly complementary to those of the leaves, so we should have good separation between the foreground and the background. I've already sampled some colors for, for the keep and the drop sets here, as you can see. I've sampled colors from the flowers for, that I want to keep and colors from the leaves and this background here that I want to get rid of. So having done that, I'm going to grab the uh, eraser brush and I'm going to start uh, stroking the background in the area that I want to delete. And here it's uh, perfect as it's going through this operation it calls expanding segments. So this takes a little time and let's see what happens when it gets done. Okay, then it feathers a little bit, so that takes a little more time. And now it has uh, removed some of the background, but I have to say the results are not impressive. It hasn't removed very much of the background, and it hasn't gotten very close to the flower. Now the next thing I'm going to do so that we can see what's going on better is zoom in to 100% so that we can brush maybe a little closer and, and see clearly what's happening with the mask. So I'm going to try that again now, going closer to the flower and see if we can improve upon this mask that way. So it's expanding segments again. Feathering. And so it did get closer, but still there's a uh, there's this big gap here between the the, the flower and the uh, the leaves in this area here. It didn't come all the way up, and yet over here it's actually intruding into the the the, the color of the petal. So I'm going to try and clean that up if I can, maybe a little bit with the refine edge brush, and see what that does. Um, that's actually not working so well. That made things worse. Now we're eating into the flower. Okay, I'm on the other side of the flower now, and I'm going to continue to try and work with the drop brush tool um, see if I can do any better over here. So I've got a fairly large brush size selected, and I'm stroking around the green area that I want to drop out. And let's see how it performs over here. So we're still failing to come right up to the edge. There's lots of holes, lots of islands in this selection. Um, and now we're starting to see some intrusion into the petal again. I'm going to reduce the size of the drop brush and see if I can get closer. So I'm going to stroke right on up close here. And as before, I'm still seeing that it, the mask intrudes into the flower. Uh, I'm going to see what I can do about that with using the keep brush. Um, so the keep brush, you, you can tell it to leave this part, don't mask it, and in fact, that has, seems to be making things worse, not better. I'm going to try and keep this, and again, it's, <laughs> it's keeping the part that I tell it, but then it's uh, reselecting some part that I didn't want. And so, I, and I've still got these areas right along the edge here that's not working well. Okay, to try and improve my results, what I've done is I've turned on the property inspector for the drop brush, and you can see the property inspector over here, and there's some additional settings that might help me get a better result. So this expand tolerance controls how far the brush expands when you select an area. So I'm going to brush out again with this increased value for the expand tolerance. Let's see if that helps fill in some of the holes. Well, it's still getting some pretty big holes, so I'm going to increase that some more. Not sure how far I should go, but let me try to select this dark green. And so it's getting a little better, but as you can see now, it's getting uh, too much better. It's intruding far into the petal, so that's not good. So my span tolerance is maybe too big. So let me back up and um, undo that selection. I'm going to back this off down to where it wasn't intruding. And now let me try the segment size, maybe increasing the segment size can help. 
Let's see what this does now. Then it has to resegment the image when you change the segment size. So there's this little delay. And uh, let's go with this combination and see what this does for it. I'm going to try and select these various shades of green to tell it that I want to drop out all of this area. And is this the magic combination? Feathering 97, well, not so much. I'm still intruding into the flower area. And if I go back here with the keep brush, and now it's got those same segment and expand tolerances. Uh, I don't know if I want those or not. Uh, there's also this edge refinement, but let me just try it like this first and see what happens. No, that's too much, so let me back up. And uh, let me reduce my edge tolerance now for the keep brush, and I'm going to reduce my brush size. Does that help? That's better, but there's still all of these areas that are not deselected. They shouldn't be masked out. What about edge refinement? What does this do? Let me see if I can use the keep brush by increasing the edge refinement. Um, yes and no. I mean, now this, the edge is looking better, but still not good. And there's all these gaps uh, where it should be masked out. So this is not going so terribly well. I'm going to uh, abandon this effort with the keep and drop brushes because I'm just not getting where I want to be.